Hello, my name is Mordred Viking, and I would like to welcome you to this brand new series of Total War Warhammer. I finally got my hands on this game, and I'm going to dive in. So, we're going to be doing the campaign, and drum roll, please, while we select what faction we're going to play as. We are, as you may have guessed, we're, we are, we're going to play as the Empire. This is the Empire Strikes Back campaign, so that is who we are playing as, because the Empire must indeed strike back. Because in this, the Empire actually starts disunited. You, Basically the story is that, in fact I can read this and then you'll know the story. For two and a half millennia the Empire has formed the bulwark against encroaching forces of destruction, but the realm is in constant turmoil, beset on all sides by enemies ferocious and foul. Yet it endures, for mankind has a steely determination to not merely live but to thrive. The Empire's armies are mighty, large regiments of disciplined troops led by valiant warrior generals and supplemented by the arcane will of the battle wizards, as well as powerful machines of war. A new emperor has recently been crowned, but he is untested and not the candidate many elect accounts wanted, and at a time when dark clouds gather in the north, so begins the age of Karl Franz, and he has much to do, unite the empire, secure its borders, and bring prosperity to its beleaguered citizens. The twin-tailed comet blazes across the sky once again, but is this an omen, for good or ill? Well, let's hope it's not a dark omen, eh? So, the Empire. Uh, Creative Assembly has worked very hard to make each of the, diff the uh, different factions uh, feel very different. The Empire is the most traditional, so if you have played any of the Total War games before, the Empire will be immediately recognisable to you. Uh, then you have the Dwarves, who are very technological-based. Um, different races have different ways of handling technology. So, for example, it says here, technology is branches are linked to various buildings so in order to get metallurgical techs I think we would need a blacksmith. The dwarves on the other hand start with two tech trees and they can research from either. Uh, there's one site like more civic and then there's another one which is more military. The green skins I'm not actually sure how their tech works but they have something called fightiness and basically if you have a high fightiness rating uh, that is basically how many people you've been attacking and raiding and stuff like that then you will attract more people to your army and you could even get new stacks like NPC controlled stacks following your main stacks around to give you an even bigger horde however if your fightiness drops too low then your people will start infighting and you will actually suffer attrition everywhere vampire counts rely on a thing called corruption where basically they can spread corruption to areas around their central holdings which will cause uh, public order issues uh, where it is and then it's basically a precursor to an eventual attack by your own forces. Plus of course they can raise the dead and that can be a very very powerful tool indeed. Although their penalty is they have absolutely no ranged units. None. Zero. Zilch. So they rely a lot on flying units to kind of tie enemies down in order for their um, melee troops to get into the fight. And then Chaos. They function like the Horde from Attila and they don't have cities. If they conquer a city they burn it down and then their units actually recruit uh, other units when they encamp. So that is a very different playstyle and then you'll be earning all of your money basically through raiding and sacking and things like that. Talking about raiding and sacking Different factions can only conquer certain settlements. You cannot just blanket your colour over the entire world. So the Empire, it says here, may only conquer territory belonging to the Vampire Counts or other human factions except for the Norska. Uh, the reason for this is humans, for example, would not like living underground. They would hate it. Um, so attacking a Dwarven Hold and uh, con capturing the Dwarven Hold would be pointless. You can only sack it, you can only raid it. Uh, I think you can raise it as well. Uh, the Dwarves and the Greenskins can use each other's settlements, and then the Vampire Counts and the Empire. The Greenskins is the only one I was a little bit ambivalent about, because I think Greenskins have overland and underground settlements. I'm not sure why they and the Empire can't, for example, but apparently not. And the reason the Empire and the Vampire Counts can is because technically the Vampire Counts are a human faction. In fact, part of the lore is that Manfred from Karstein believes he is the rightful Emperor. And the Vampires, of course, need blood, and blood comes from humans, so many of their thralls are humans. So basically if the Empire conquer a Vampire Count city, it's essentially liberating them from the deathly throes of the undead. <laughs> and if the Vampire Counts take it, then it's basically another quick snack. Anyway, we are playing as the Empire. We'll probably be doing the short campaign. Uh, so we need to hold every province in the Empire. We need to take Eastern and Western Sylvania from the Vampire Counts, 
and we need to ensure that the chaos exists only in the chaos wastes. Now I should say that I've played a very, very brief bit of this game, and I mean brief, like five minutes, just to make sure I got the sound balance and everything working. So I've played through the initial combat tutorial, but no more. But we are going to be doing it again because I have not actually done any of the uh, rest of the tutorial, and I still need to kind of learn how the game works. So playing as the Empire, you have a choice between two faction leaders, so you have uh, the Emperor Karl Franz himself, or you can play as Balthazar Gelt, who is the head of the Colleges of Magic. So starting with Gelt, powerful lore of magic metal wizard, uh, can unlock a flying Pegasus mount. His faction bonus is that he can get one extra battle wizard hero, and battle wizards that he does recruit cost 25% less upkeep. And when he starts the game, he begins with a unit of outriders, a unit of great swords, and I have a personal bias towards these guys. I freaking love Great Swords. And in fact, if you've been watching my Prophecy of Pendor series, uh, Metenheim style, you will probably recognize that the Forlorn Hope, and indeed Metenheim, has a lot of influence, um, sorry, a lot of inspiration from these guys. I mean, the whole story behind the Great Swords is they're older soldiers, they're very stubborn, uh, they're the elite. Does that sound familiar to anyone? And then they start with a mortar, but we are going to be playing as Emperor Karl Franz, because who doesn't like a little bit of imperialism from time to time? He is the faction leader, he is a powerful melee fighter and leader, and he can unlock Death Glory, Neek Griffin Mount, capable of flight and ferocious in combat. Faction effects are that all characters can move 5% further, and he gets cheaper upkeep on Reichsguard and great swords, which means we can probably spam them slightly. Uh, and he starts with halberdiers, hand gunners, and the Reichsguard. Now, I used to actually play a lot of um, fantasy battle tabletop, and I played as the Empire, but before I started as the Empire, I was actually playing as the Bretonians. And the reason I switched is because I realized that Empire Knights are actually stronger than Bretonian Knights, and that is that was gut-wrenching uh, when I discovered that. Um, because Bretonians are all about chivalry, so surely their knights must be good. No, actually Empire Knights are a lot, lot tougher. So I switched to them and then I was able to use cannons and steam tanks, more importantly, and the love affair kind of went from there. So we are going to be playing as you. I will shut up during this introduction so that you can enjoy it. And we'll go from there. And I have to say, uh, before it starts, there is an absolutely marvellous moustache coming up. I mean, it is... It is good. Magnificent, you could even say. The drums of war never cease. Look at that marvelous specimen. For the old world lies in great peril. Magnificent. nations. As gods battle for the world's fate, I make my own humble contribution. In the employ of the newly anointed Emperor. Even now, we make haste to the Emperor's ancestral capital. For the demented Rachnik Spider Claw leads an attack on Altdorf's walls. My charge is Karl Franz, 
the true wielder of Gal Maraz. But as he fights to secure his status as emperor, will his reign strengthen the nation? Men of Reichland, Greenskins assault our capital. Theirs is a vile race Sigma swore to expel from our lands, yet they dare return. Join me, men, for I will not rest until every accursed goblin lies burning on a pyre. We are Sigma's heirs! The goblin army lies ahead, Emperor. They are preparing for an attack on Ottorf. See for yourself. Heading out! Stop them! Your men are engaging the enemy from all sides, sire. Carl Frank! Be sure to join the fight yourself. March! That's an order! Come men! To arms! To arms! So in this you only start with the two units. This is very much the tutorial, so it's teaching you how the game works. So there's not a lot of commentary I can offer here. I mean, there's only so much you can really do with two units. But as the uh, tutorial goes on, you do get access to more and more of the troops on the field. So hopefully a little more strategy will come into play then. So do... As you fight, that help and advice is available at your request, my lord. You so may rely upon it. <laughs> So do bear with me if I'm a little quiet from time to time, because there's quite honestly not much to say. So we're just going to full-on attack the enemy. Uh, F1 is the wiki, that is good to know. Cool. And then we have some mortars back here firing away. Attack, my emperor! Bring your righteous fury down upon the enemy! Smite them without mercy! Are those doom divers? Here they are. Hell and My subjects call to arms, men. This is my command. Attack the sides and the rear of the enemy where possible. Their courage will surely fail if surrounded. So heroes do have different abilities in the battle which they can use. And that's what I was clicking on here. So we have this one, which is. Foe Seeker, which increases charge, bonus, speed, and vigor. Don't actually know what. Oh, is vigor movement speed? No. What is vigor? I have no idea. And then hold the line, which is a charge resistance and leadership. So these are actually. I should have used that one when I was charging, and then this one is when I'm defending. Is that automate? Oh no, it's just showing it's an aura. So whenever I use these, it's for everyone around him rather than something I actually select on someone. And then this is the unit of halberdiers that I have control of. So we can just zoom in and watch the fight, really. He just hit his own guys. It looked that way, didn't it? Nice. So one thing which has changed in Warhammer Total War is they no longer have the like one-on-one -on -one fights that they used to have with the, the animations. You can see like these guys just stabbing away at things. So this is more like the Medieval 2 model, where instead of literally physics uh, dealing with the fights, it's now actually done again on numbers and statistics, which is important um, from the developer standpoint. Um, the reason for that is how do you really animate um, like one unit fighting a troll or a goblin or an orc? They're all different heights, they're all different required tactics. So 
basically because of animation costs they didn't do that and actually I think that's a good thing uh, because medieval total war is often stated to be the better combat model um, because it doesn't lock units down into one-on-one -on -one fights okay so now we have got control of this whole line plus the handgunners here behind so we're going to shift the handguns over to the flank we're going to do that one which is the charge bonus and we're just going to charge them and the handguns have actually caught a unit here Whoops. Um, so you go and help them actually we should be totally fine here so we're going to absolutely smack this unit here and here come the trolls so fighting trolls you actually kind of want the oops not you ah you and you attack that you go over here so we're trying to pull the uh, swordsmen away because they are not very effective against trolls against trolls you want two-handed units so if you look here it says charge defense versus large so when a large attacker is charging them it has no effect and trolls are considered large in fact if I click on them can it tell me no. what skills does he have? missile resist and courage gives leadership bonus okay you can hide immune to psychology so no fear and terror and then the two abilities that he has okay cool Ah, he finished. Well done. Try and shoot them before they get anywhere. We'll send in Carl Franz against the trolls. One man army. I'm sure he'll be fine. You can see here the uh, health of each unit. And yes, I should actually be using his ability. Is there a way of automating them? So here we have our um, halberdiers fighting the trolls. We have our handgunners fighting the other trolls that is fighting Sigmar. He fights amongst his mounted troops. Strike him down. The Helden Hammer! Take the shells! To me, man! So their cavalry has just charged into my halberdiers there. We've got Sigmar. I keep saying Sigmar. Friends! Attacking those guys. Sigmar's their god. We're going to hit their cavalry, hopefully before they hit our handguns. Keep running. Yes, we got them. And then we'll turn around and we'll start shooting. We'll get you guys to attack them, actually. If we can. Oh, nice volley. Point blank. Lovely. Lovely. <laughs> we just got Carl Franz versus the trolls. Oh no, are cavalry about to hit me? No they're not, they're running away. Okay. I wanna watch this fight. Oh, he's puking over me. Lovely. Yeah, I think we've got them pretty well sorted. <laughs> then the turrets of Altdorf are actually helping us out. You guys should be moving. I think these guys are dodging back so they can turn and then get another charge in. Yeah, it certainly looks that way. But they get no bonus against me because I've got spears and spears are good against large and cavalry are generally large. Does it actually say whether? Vanguard, hide, strider. Where's that general? Can we kill him? But I think that is basically everyone Come routing now. The scum flee, my there we go. Dog is secure. Huzzah! So that wasn't too bad. Close victory. I did better this time than I did previously. Um, I, I did win last time as well. That, that wasn't me commenting on having lost. Uh, you have won the battle, but do not celebrate too much for the gods look ill upon he who came close near to defeat. I was not near to defeat. Shut up. Last time my allies took a lot more of the brunt of the fighting, this time it was all on me. The 
Greenskins run for their burrows, Emperor. Their dead and dying litter the field. Altdorf is safe for now. Marvellous. Anyway, I think that is going to be it for this first episode. I do have to keep these a little bit shorter than I would otherwise like, I'm afraid, simply because I need to record as much as I can possibly can, as I will be unable to record for the next three weeks, which kind of sucks. I want to make sure that, you know, we get this content going through to you guys. So, so far, so good. Uh, if you're enjoying the series, then please do hit that like and subscribe button. Very much appreciated. Uh, if you have any tips or advice for me, then please do leave a comment in the section below. I do try and read and respond to pretty much everything there, and although I won't be able to record anything for the next couple of weeks, I will still have internet access, so I'll be able to frequent the comment section still. So please do keep those comments coming. If you have any questions or anything about the game, uh, that would be the place to ask them. I will try and uh, get back to you as soon as I can, as I have said. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Goodbye.